our ability to effectively communicate the importance of this program and the possible importance of the technology is going to hinge on our ability to identify uh, and express our ideas in ways outside of mathematics. I'm an atomic physicist and uh, I'm, I'm practicing in a subfield known as uh, AMO physics, atomic, molecular, and optical physics. And uh, in recent years, uh, this subfield has been investigating uh, the, the interaction between light and matter under uh, interesting and sometimes extreme conditions. Uh, in my group, we look at the properties of, of atoms uh, when they are extremely cold, just uh, a billionth of a degree above absolute zero where their behavior is uh, wave-like uh, rather than uh, particle-like. It's vital to be able to communicate the goals and the essence of one's research to a broader audience and a lot of that communication can't happen through what is often referred to as the language of physics mathematics because the people you need to communicate with aren't equipped with those mathematical tools. Essentially, you're communicating ideas, and uh, to communicate ideas, you're relying on language and a clear use of language. The challenge I find is really to find appropriate analogies that a layperson is familiar with, and language is an essential component to that process. And oftentimes, what the physicist will think is an effective analogy may in fact be a poor analogy, and so it's, it's, it's vital to be collaborative and to be, to be willing to communicate uh, with, with people outside the field and to be willing to stick your neck out and try things out. And sometimes you'll, you'll, you'll try things out and it will be an absolute failure. You'll know it immediately because people will look at you like you're nuts. Uh, and in order to, to fine tune the message, uh, it, it's, re it's really important to have that conversation uh, many times with many people. For me, it's, it's a lot of hard work. I, I need to go through draft and revision and draft after draft before we, we get a product which I feel is uh, acceptable for uh, a scientific or a, a general audience. Uh, the joke in my research group is a paper is not be ready to be submitted until we have V20 after the file name, version 20. <laughs> and I think um, many physicists experience the writing process in a similar way. It's something that may not necessarily flow the first time, but you recognize it's, that it's vital to do right, and so you're willing to take the time to, uh, to get it right. Hopefully by the 18th revision, uh, you're not having those aha moments, oh, maybe I left this out, <laughs> as you're trying to uh, make your argument as, as precise as, as, as possible. Jargon is the enemy, and uh, I, my, my advice uh, is to you, you, you root it out at, at all costs. If there's a word that's being used that <clears throat> is not generally uh, understood, then you can find a, a different way of expressing yourself. Uh, jargon is, in my experience, often used to cover uh, as a cover for not clear thinking. It's, I, I have always found ways of avoiding jargon. And uh, it's especially important not to use jargon when your target audience is uh, a lay audience or uh, you're in a situation where you're giving a, a, a general audience talk. That people will just not understand what you're saying and they'll stop listening to you and you'll, you'll lose the opportunity to communicate. A figure, a graph, just lines, uh, just dropped in front of someone means nothing. That, that figure needs to be supported by uh, effective text explaining uh, the idea behind the figure. And so it's very important to make sure there's a tight interplay between the scientific graphic, which a practicing physicist may say that, that contains all the information. I don't need to think about the language that wraps around that. Uh, in fact, the language wrapping around that figure is probably more crucial than the figure itself. It's the concise explanation of what the figure is trying to convey so uh, it's, it's, it's vital to know how to, how to uh, support a figure with the appropriate phrasing. There are some papers out there that have a reputation of being, uh, you know, this is the important paper, you need to understand it, and then you'll, you'll understand it at all costs, even if the uh, presentation is ineffective. 
the vast majority of papers are in a different category. They're ones where you're trying to expand your uh, experience base and you're, you're reading them because you thought you were interested in them. And if you become disinterested in that paper because of an ineffective presentation, then you'll, you'll never, you'll, you'll never take the time to, 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 to get what that author was trying to tell you. And uh, if, if you're the author of a paper like that, then you've, you've just missed a chance to connect.